This is an open letter directed at Sega and Sonic Team. If any folks viewing this could help me to get this recognized by the people that need to see it, be it by sharing it around publicly, uh, expressing that we all share this sentiment, or at least similar sentiments anyway, that would be much appreciated. While highly unlikely that anyone at Sega or Sonic Team is necessarily going to hear what I have to say here, I think it is worth taking this shot in the dark as an audience member to kind of offer Sega and Sonic Team the sum total of my own research and say, I think this could potentially do you some good. Also, if anyone out there knows Japanese and wants to like dub this or make subtitles or something, that would be hugely appreciated. I know YouTube doesn't offer community subtitles anymore, but like you can always DM me the subtitles on Twitter or my email address, channelpupyt at gmail.com. With that out of the way, Dear Sega and Sonic Team. I'd like to take the opportunity to offer you some of my own insights on the Sonic franchise and how I think it can be improved. But why does what I have to say matter? Yes, I'm a Sonic fan, lots of people are. And oftentimes Sonic fans have their own very thickly defined vision of what they want Sonic to be, which I'm not bringing to the table here. I have five years of marketing experience and I'm fresh out of university. While my experience doesn't necessarily rival that of someone 10 years my senior, at the same time I would like to think that I've got forward thinking outside the box insight. And that's a term I want to focus on here, outside the box. I want to assure you that my ideas I'll be presenting here do not require any kind of dramatic franchise upheaval. Sure, I've got ideas for reboots, I think every Sonic fan has, but those are conversations for another day. I want to focus on taking the Sonic brand as you have it and maximizing its potential. And I'm focusing on the games, the core component, the progenitor of the Sonic Mega franchise. So what is my inspiration for all this? What's my launch pad, if you will? The marketing of the upcoming Sonic Frontiers and Sonic Origins. Sonic team leader Takeshi Azuka-san has made it quite clear that the attitude towards Sonic in terms of games is to split Sonic into two different genres that appeal to two different audiences. Kind of continuing off of the business model that was presented to us in 2017 with Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces, now continuing with Sonic Origins and Sonic Frontiers. So that the Sonic gaming franchise takes into account the two sides of the audience, one of which that prefers the classic Sonic, the other of which that prefers the modern style of Sonic. And while on paper catering to different types of Sonic fans isn't a bad idea. Having different styles for the same character is not a bad idea either. It definitely comes across to me as someone who's been following the marketing of Sonic Frontiers that Sega and Sonic Team are treating the modern and classic Sonic fans as very, very separate characters. As Azuka-san himself said, two different genres of game. So it means that the classic Sonic and the modern Sonic fans are both being catered towards, yet response to Sonic Frontiers definitely hasn't been quite as glowing as I think Sega wanted it to be. And yes, that is partially down to the technical performance of the game in the footage that we've seen, but having a complete and total disconnect between the modern and the classic Sonic is not necessary. And I'm not saying that these two characters should cross over again. We don't need another Sonic Generations and we don't need another Sonic Forces. We don't need to keep making this distinction between the modern and the classic Sonic. What I'm noticing here with Sonic Origins and Sonic Frontiers is that classic Sonic pretty much stays in his box. It's the 2D classic Sonic gameplay with minimal variation and levels that people feel kind of safe in. It's got a style, it's got a very specific art style that people really like, and that's kind of been, you know, taken to the next level with the Tykes and Hess animations. It's a very well-defined image of what Sonic is. The problem with classic Sonic's end of the franchise is that we're only really seeing little smatterings of where this franchise could go in games like Sonic Mania, with the four original levels designed by the new Mania team. Yes, while classic Sonic Sonic is supposed to capitalize on all of the things that fans love about Sonic, stages such as Studiopolis, Press Garden, Mirage Saloon, and Titanic Monarch demonstrate an excellent understanding of what makes those classic Sonic levels classics while making new levels. And I think that's what we really need to see after Sonic Origins is a new Classic Sonic title with all new levels. As right now, it feels like Classic Sonic is kind of just in this box of he's a nostalgic character, but we're not really looking at what the future of Classic Sonic could be. 
it feels like we're looking at him as very much an emblem of Sonic's history, but if you want to treat him as kind of a separate entity, he needs to have a future of his own. Now let's move over to the modern Sonic, and what it feels like to me is that every Sonic game nowadays is a throw of the dice. We have had a number of really solid modern Sonic games, but it feels more like a successful throw of the dice than it does something that's actually coordinated, something that fundamentally understands what makes Sonic good. Modern Sonic may be just one side of the Sonic franchise now and kind of a separate entity from his classic self, but for Modern Sonic to be successful, he still needs to understand what made his classic counterpart great. Modern Sonic has the spectacle. It should be the excitement of the classic Sonic in a whole new dimension, and while he's definitely got the speed, Modern Sonic games tend to be hyper-focused on that speed without really demonstrating much of an understanding of what made that speed so satisfying, what makes that speed meaningful. It's typified in a game like Sonic Forces, where you quote-unquote dash like a maniac through the levels as quickly as possible, and you get a very quick dopamine hit. But it's nothing meaningful. It requires minimal skill. You don't need to time when you go fast, you don't need to use much of a technique with it, you don't need excellent reflexes to complete a Sonic Forces stage, even later in the game. You just need a willingness to dash like a maniac, and you'll be carried through these levels by dash paths and grind rails and springs, and things like moving up and down hills have absolutely no impact on Sonic's speed. There's no variance to his momentum, he goes fast and that's that. I understand why Sega and Sonic Team, you guys are so fixated on that breakneck speed of the boost gameplay. It has demonstrated its success in games such as Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Colors, and Sonic Generations. And it is absolutely thrilling. And I'm not saying get rid of the boost gameplay, but I'm saying have that boost gameplay, but with an understanding of what makes the classic gameplay great. Have that boost gameplay go hand in hand with realistic physics and momentum. Sonic can still boost, but have him feel affected by hills. Have him feel affected by sharp inclines, declines. Have Sonic move way faster when he's moving downhill. That would feel awesome. Imagine you're boosting on just sort of a straight path. And it feels like you're at top speed, but then Sonic starts moving downhill and suddenly that boost is 10 times faster. It would feel incredible. Imagine if when you're on sharp inclines, your boost becomes a lot harder to use. This would stay true to the modern Sonic's breakneck speed, but while actually demonstrating an understanding of what made the classic Sonic great in the first place. And with more of a focus on momentum, you wouldn't need dash pads every time you see a loop-de-loop. -loop. You wouldn't need them to be scripted events. There is still a gap in the market for physics-based platformers like Sonic. And all the while Sega are treating classic Sonic and modern Sonic as almost different entities in a bid to appease their individual fans, what I'm noticing a lot of is a lot of classic Sonic fans that wouldn't be averse to 3D Sonic games if they just demonstrated an understanding of what made the classic so great. But I'm also seeing a lot of modern 3D Sonic fans that want to see some of the nuances of the classic Sonic incorporated into the modern. It's it's all well and good you treat these as different genres of game, but they don't need to be. The only major difference needs to just be one is 2D, one is 3D, and that can just cater to those preferences. But I think that if we had classic Sonic games coming out with brand new level designs, and modern Sonic Boost 3D games that were fully in 3D had the boost but also had that momentum that made the classic Sonic so great, there would be less of a divide in Sonic fans, and Sonic's fanbase would probably flock to both projects. But here's a concern I can imagine being brought up. What about the spectacle? What about the cinematic quality of the modern Sonic Boost games? You can still have that, but the requirement is that the player must play it skillfully. They earn that cinematic experience through skillful play. One of the closest things we've had to that is Eggman Land from Sonic Unleashed, a stage that is devilishly difficult and sadistic all the same, but once you know that level, once you get good at it, it feels amazing. Watching someone play that level well feels like a cinematic action set piece, it feels climactic. Having that quality in there, but having the player actually earn it feels so much better than levels that are just tailor-made to look cinematic, like what we've got in Sonic Forces. It's not enough for Sonic games to look cinematic. These are video games. They have to feel cinematic. Sonic Forces demonstrated great understanding of Sonic's cinematic quality, but didn't understand how to make it feel cinematic, as we're watching Sonic and his friends hop on space shuttles, on trains, but we're not actually doing anything. Sure, 
there are player inputs in the form of quick time events, but that doesn't feel like we're actually doing this. When it comes to platformers, precise player inputs are paramount. But I understand the question, what about accessibility for the casual gamer? Sure, that'll please the fans, but what about kids? What about newcomers to the franchise? Ultimately, you want to constantly have new audiences being attracted to your franchise, and Sonic is ultimately targeted at kids. The bottom line is, kids are not necessarily the lowest common denominator, which is what I feel like a lot of Sonic games lately have been trying to appeal to, be it for their booger fart brain writing, or lack of challenge or nuance, such as in games like Sonic Forces. There are plenty of kids that enjoy being challenged. Look to the success of the recent Crash Bandicoot revival games. That franchise would not be able to survive on nostalgia alone, and Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time will have introduced plenty of newcomers to the Crash Bandicoot franchise, yet it is a really difficult game. Heck, if you want to even look at sort of pseudo-physics-based platforming, look to the success of the game Fall Guys, which I understand that you're fully aware of given that Sonic has crossed over with Fall Guys in the past and is set to cross over once again. Kids don't need to purely dash like a maniac, and if you want to keep them engaged, keep them hooked, give them incentive to get better. Have a steady incline in difficulty. Games like Sonic Generations and Sonic Unleashed demonstrated this pretty well. Games that start off allowing you to just dash like a maniac. I mean, look at Apotos, look at Windmill Isle Act 2, you just smash through that place. But then as the game goes on, you get things like Cool Edge, which steps up in difficulty a little bit, you get Dragon Roid, which steps up in difficulty a little bit, and then you get Eggman Land, which is really difficult. That's a good difficulty incline. Get them hooked on allowing them to smash through the town at speeds which they didn't think were achievable in video games before really challenging them. As a first time player, as someone that had never played a Sonic game before, I could probably pick up Mortar Canyon on Sonic Forces and probably just breeze through it. It's really not much harder than the first level of any other Sonic game. Here's a part where Sonic Frontiers itself in specific gets me concerned and its marketing is there's a lot of talk about how the open zone allows them to incentivize exploration, find secrets, allows lots of player interaction like it's a giant playground. These are things that a 3D Sonic stage should feel like anyway. These are things that the classic Sonic levels felt like. It's promising to see these things getting reincorporated into the modern Sonic games, but why not in the main levels as well? The main levels don't just need to be narrow pathways that you can dash like a maniac down. They can be a little more open, incentivize exploration as you say. And the funny thing is, we've had modern Sonic boost games that have done that. Look at level like Sky Sanctuary and Sonic Generations, Seaside Hill, those are really well designed stages. Now like make that twice the size and have camera control to really help you explore these stages. And that's what we need. Regarding Sonic Frontiers, the IGN first interview with Takeshi Azuka rather insultingly teased a Sonic Adventure continuation with no plans to revive the Sonic Adventure series. Now I understand that that is in many ways on the part of IGN asking that question. It's a strange press junket, I think we can all see that. Why is there a sector of the Sonic fans vocally pining for the Sonic Adventure series back? Well let's look at the identity of the two Sonics we have. There is the classic Sonic, and there is a visual and musical identity to it. It's bright, it's vibrant, it's got this art deco aesthetic to it. It has a retro new Jack Swing feel to the music. There is a clear cut identity to the classic Sonic. But when you move over to the modern Sonic, again, it's like throwing the dice. Sometimes you get something that's realistic, grounded, earthy. Sometimes you get something that's really cartoony and plasticky. We've had games like Sonic Generations and Sonic Forces, which have introduced a middle ground between the cartoony and the realistic, but then going into Sonic Frontiers, we're back to photorealism. Sometimes the music's jazzy, sometimes it's contemporary. Looking at Sonic Frontiers, we're expecting something a bit more atmospheric. What is the visual and sound identity of the modern Sonic? And I think the closest it's ever come to an identity of its own was with the Sonic Adventure series, where it all had this very urban look to it. The graffiti-esque art style. And Crush 40 as well, Sonic's house band. That rock sound that Junsono brought to the table defines modern Sonic music, and I think you recognize that because like the Sonic Symphony 
Like, there was a clear understanding of what Crush 40 brought to the table. There was a clear understanding of what made Crush 40 so special. And you can still realize that with artists like Tomio Otani as well, as proven once again by the Sonic Symphony, as proven by the Sonic Runners soundtrack. But there definitely needs to be a signature feel to Sonic's music. I think a lot of the reason why people want the Sonic Adventure series back is it feels like it had its own audio-visual identity. More so than the Sonic games that we're getting today, which, like I say, feel like throws of the dice. What style will we land on today? Now, there is one thing that the modern Sonic shares with the classic Sonic, and this is a bad thing for both sides. The reuse of familiar level themes. Classic Sonic I can almost kind of forgive. Sonic Mania was like the first time we'd return to that classic Sonic format and it boasted new twists on old zones, okay. And then we're getting Sonic Origins, which is obviously a remaster, but going forward, I don't want to see any more reused level themes in any classic Sonic games. I want a new classic Sonic game with new level themes. As for the modern Sonic, We've just got wind that there will be Sky Sanctuary and Green Hill Zone returning again in Sonic Frontiers. As well as rumors that all of the linear cyberspace stages will ape level themes from previous Sonic games, including Sonic Generations. People are not entirely averse to Sonic having a home, like a locale. If we want to treat Green Hill Zone as Sonic's home, treat it as like a little hub to start or end the adventure in, fine. But sadly, Green Hill is not the only level that we're seeing brought back constantly. We have Chemical Plant, which we saw in Sonic Generations, Sonic Mania, the LEGO Sonic Dimensions pack, Sonic Forces, Sky Sanctuary, which we saw in Sonic Generations, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transform. Don't get me started on how many times we've seen Seaside Hill return. Planet Wisp is definitely starting to outstay its welcome. Same goes for Rooftop Run. Look, if you want to put these in racing spin-offs, whatever, ideally I would rather have levels that we have haven't seen reused so much. Team Sonic Racing had the right idea in including stages like Sandopolis, which we hadn't seen brought to 3D before. But then it's like, oh, but people responded so well to Sonic Generations, which brought back all these levels. And yes, Sonic Generations is a fantastic game. I still revisit it pretty regularly, but that's just it. It's a game that's revisited regularly because it's so good, you don't need another one. If we want a Sonic game where we run through familiar stages, we've got that already. We've got it with Sonic Generations. We don't need to do that again because it means that nostalgia ceases to be nostalgic. Think about in 20 years time, you finally decide to dig up the Sonic Generations formula again and have Sonic revisit levels from the last 20 years of his existence once more. What are you gonna add to that if you keep reusing the same levels over and over again? This is not just a Sonic centric thing. If Mario reused the exact same levels every single game, it would get stale, it would be lame, it would be laughable. If Spyro did it, it would be laughable. So to move into yet another Sonic game that's reusing the same level themes again, it's laughable. Sega, Sonic Team, I get the feeling that when it comes to Sonic fans and vocal players, you feel like you're being pulled in two different directions. Some people saying, we want you to stay true to what Sonic is. Some people saying, we want something new. And the answer is you can do both. Sonic himself, needs to stay true to himself. Sonic himself should still have that core appeal. Momentum, speed, skill. But when we say we want something new, we mean new levels to play in, new stories to tell. That's really it. That's really what people are asking for. That's why your fan base is so vocal. And I'm telling you, your kid audience are not gonna lose all interest just because they didn't see the fun green hill again. And that's the thing, with your kid audience, they're constantly playing games now that salute the games that people like me grew up with. Let them have their own Sonic experiences to grow up with. Let them have their own response to Green Hill Zone, their own level that was there first. Let them have their own experiences of overcoming the obstacles that stand in the way of Sonic's speed and his momentum. Let them experience the satisfaction. I just, I wanna reassure you that both the modern and classic Sonic can appeal to the same audience, but a bigger version of that same audience. You want the kids that are growing up with games like Sonic Frontiers today to come back to Sonic Frontiers, to experience that satisfaction all over again in the same way that people like me revisit games like Sonic 2 and 3. But you don't want them to feel disengaged with where the franchise is going either. Sonic Frontiers could still be a really good game, but if you really want to secure Sonic's future as a darling of platform mascots, 
as someone that can still rival Mario, you gotta understand the fundamentals of what makes Sonic great with either classic or modern Sonic. And then you gotta take Sonic and throw him into new worlds, new adventures, new stories. That's all you gotta do. You don't need to reboot it. You don't need to commit to just 2D or just 3D. You'll then have an overlap audience, which is like a new audience. You'll kind of have, you know, 2D fans that are interested in the 3D games and 3D fans that are interested in the 2D games. It's all about maximizing Sonic. So with that, I want to thank you all for listening, and I bid you all a good and safe day. So what do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video and you want to support more like it, be sure to hit that big, beautiful subscribe button. And of course, in the description below are links to different social media feeds, including the Patreon. If you're feeling extra generous, like the following people. Who are Marcus Ward, Sirius the Skeptic, Biotin Arts, Mr. SP, David 20 Covers, Sergio, John Comey, Shodin, George is Lost, Legendary Ray Ray, Cheesemaster769, Adam Myers, and Fayalan Schwarzenkraut. Thank you guys, you are the best of the best, but as for the rest of you, Thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a great day. Fuck.